finally did have that first crash in 2022. It was it was late November peak for Nasdaq, a little bit before that for the Russell. A bu- in fact, a number of markets peaked literally, Jay, around the world in succession. And the last one was the S&P 500 on January 4th, right at the beginning uh, of 2022. So that was a very meaningful top. And then, but I also look, and I had to analyze, Jay, all throughout history of the stock markets, what does it say to, what does it take to say a bubble's finally over? And you really need a 30 to 50% first crash. And so that is what we got in 2022, but that is the first crash. So if this is what I think it is, that the ending of the second major stock bubble and the second major real estate bubble, of which we've never seen two major bubbles this close together in a row before in all of history. So, so the first one was a natural bubble, with strong demographics and and you know consumers and investors feeling great you know kind of like the roaring 20s bubble but the second one was 100% artificial all you know 10 trillion dollars of money printing and fiscal stimulus over 2 years and we're still feeling that stimulus a bit but they were forced to tighten and so i think that's why this is not going to last long this bounce should be very close to its end cuz now the tightening should start to hit over the next year and 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 this market does not deserve to be anywhere near the highs uh you know with, with the fundamental demographic trends which i measure long term so well at this lowest point I, I i was saying all the way back in the early years of my forecast in 1980s this boom would end 2007 we go into a long sideways market with the baby busters until late 2022 or so and then we would have the millennial boom to follow well we have still not corrected this bubble yet this second bubble this artificial one and that i think the next wave down is likely to be from about now into the end of this year and then the then a final wave down in 2024 and then we should be done with this now note the natural time for all of this to happen would have been uh, on, on the decennial cycle and on my demographic cycles that we would have had a peak in more like early 2020 and then this crash into late 2020. That's what have been, but, but with all this stimulus, I think they have basically pushed off the whole cycle for two years. So now we end up peaking in late 2021 in stocks and we'll end up bottoming mid to late 2024. So this is just, and, and, and any major crash should have three surges down. So we saw that first one last year. This bounce has been longer than usual. The 1929 first bounce was only five months. This is going on eight months now. So this is really, really stretched. The next wave, if I'm right, and we're in this major crash of a lifetime and, and finally getting rid of this bubble for good, um, then this next crash will be take us to major new lows by late this year, early next year, and the whole thing will bottom somewhere between mid to late 2024. That's my scenario for now, and that has been put off by about two years from the natural scenario. We should have already, all of my cycles pointed all the way back to the lowest point for stocks around late 2022 last year. This stimulus has simply pushed that off. Now, so, so to me, we have a war to see who's stronger. Is the natural economy ultimately stronger or is there is there central banks? And I'm betting that the natural economy is going to win here, frankly, because the central banks went so far. I think their big mistake, Jay, they didn't have to overreact so strongly to COVID. It's a natural crisis. Nobody would have been surprised if the economy slowed because everybody was sick and not spending as much and staying right. home. That would, no, they had no they had to go stimulate harder than ever. $10 trillion of stimulus in two years, higher than any time in all of history. And now inflation suddenly goes from 1% to 9%. And now they have to tighten. And you know what? They, the market's still saying they haven't tightened enough. And they probably have to go, as, as expected, at least another 50 basis points. This will be the strongest tightening since the early 80s. And I say the economy is not going to handle it well, that it's an illusion that the economy is strong. The economy's only been strong because of unprecedented COVID stimulus, which they overdid beyond any imagination. And when this thing falls, there will not be a soft landing. It will be a hard landing. So that's what I'm betting on. But the proof of that pudding 
should come in the second half of this year and it should come soon or maybe we're more in a kind of a, 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 a confused sideways market. I mean, I, and the markets to me always know where they're going. They just want to leave most people in the dust and, and the smart money makes the most gain. I think even the markets don't know what sides up after so much stimulus and so much artificial impact from central banks. I think even the markets aren't really clear. But but again, proof of the pudding would be another strong downturn starting somewhere soon. If it yeah. doesn't start in the next month or two, I'm going to have to revise my forecast. And if that happens, that should not, that should be most of the damage, but there'll still should be one more wave down in 2024 before this is over. So this is not smooth sledding ahead for stocks. And this correction, I say, is not over. It's just begun. And you got to remember what, what people miss about this. And this is what's really confusing, especially right now. We're everything happens on a lag, all this stimulus. So yeah. this this 10 trillion in stimulus is still hitting now, but it should hit fully by the end of this year, 100 percent fully. And then that stimulus is gone. And then this new tightening, which started in March of last year and has continued clearly until May and looks like it will continue probably into the summer, another two hikes. That stimulus, that that tightening is going to hit for a year after that, roughly. So yeah. well into 2024. So 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 we're just at the peak of the stimulus hitting, and this was massive stimulus. So no surprise the economy's held up well. But I think there's going to be a sharp reversal soon, and now the tightening's going to hit, and and the stimulus will have worn off soon, and then we have nothing but the tightening hitting until at least uh, late summer of 2024, and that's about when I would expect a bottom. People think. Oh, China, India, all these Asian countries, they're going to grow forever. Uh, India, yes. China, no. China, demographically, like I measure for every country in the world, developed and emerging, China literally peaked in 2011. They've already seen the highest demographic surge in spending. Naturally, they would ever see it's all stimulus uh, uh, other than that. And they go down, down forever. So Japan is simply a leading indicator. And I've been saying this for decades. Japan was the first major developed country to peak because of demographics peaking. I mean, in forever, their demographics never get back to where they were. They peaked in 1996. Their bubble peaked in 89 for stocks and 91 for real estate, just like our first tech bubble peaked in 2000, ahead of the 2007 demographic peak and real estate peak just have that. So 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 they're in a long term decline. China is the only emerging country and the largest one until India gets bigger and stronger, the largest one in the world. And they are done. They're the only emerging country that has falling demographic growth for as far as I can see for decades in the future. So they don't recover from this. And 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 they have 22 percent at the home. So after getting from 20% to 60% urban, and that's the biggest thing emerging countries do. Demographics is second to urbanization because every urban person has three times the spending power as a rural in, in these emerging countries, okay? So moving people to cities is more powerful than even them going from their 20s to their 40s and naturally higher spending. So, so that's what China has done, but China overdid it. China's government, the only way since they're not elected they keep their people happy and not worrying about a top-down authoritarian government, which doesn't survive in most wealthy countries anymore, is to keep the economy growing. So that's what they did. And they did it by creating 22% empty houses. And that is death. If we had 22% empty homes in the United States, we would have a deflationary spiral that would last for a decade or two. You know, right. uh, and any other country would. And that's what I think is going to happen to China. China's going to fall hard when they fall and there's no coming out of it. I, even even when China crashes and real estate bottoms, maybe 50, 60 percent lower and stocks 70, 80 percent lower. I still wouldn't be a big buyer there because they have nowhere to grow because they can they, the rest of the they're 60 percent urban. And to get to more normal 80 percent maturity, They've already built all those homes already. They're already empty right. waiting. You don't have yeah, to yeah. build another home ever. How is China ever going to grow strongly again? And my answer is never. They're done, just like Japan. 
Japan will never see new highs in the stock market. Uh, I said that back then after the 1989 highs and 91 real and and China will, will never see new highs in real estate or stocks again and everybody thinks China is going to become the number one country in the world. They're going to be number two for a long time, but they are not going to overtake the United States.